Coming up on this week's Jaguar Week in Review, we have the information that you need to know about for snow days next week, including events and dress updates. And in this week's Focus Point, we talk to the robotics team about this year's goals for their robot and much more. We'll have that with a look at this week's news, a recap of last week's sports and more. Coming up, the Jaguar Week in Review starts now. And welcome to the Jaguar Week in Review for this week. I'm Cody Bertram and thanks for joining us. We start off this week with news. Next week will be Snow Days week for the 2017-2018 school year. This year's dress up days will be as followed. Tuesday will be Denim Day, Wednesday will be Mathlete vs. Athlete, Thursday will be Multiplicity Day, so be sure to get a group of friends and dress alike, and Friday will be either your favorite Jaguar activity attire or just Jaguar pride gear in general. Along with these dress up days, there will be many activities going on. This week will kick off on Tuesday with coronation at the BBE High School from 9.15 to 10 o'clock, where this year's snow days, king and queen will be crowned. With finals week overlapping snow days this year, there will be no activities on Wednesday and Thursday, but Friday will play host to this year's prom fundraiser basketball game, which will take place during second and third hour. Then, later in the afternoon on Friday, there will be a pep fest that will take place from 1.45 to 3.45, where coaches will speak and many fun activities will take place. Then, rounding the week off, there will be a black light dance at the high school in the back gym on Saturday, January 20th from 8 to 11. The cost is $10 per person or $15 per couple. Make sure if you are attending to wear white apparel. If you are interested in attending, stop by the office for a ticket. There will be a speech parent meeting on Saturday, January 13th at 8 a.m. in the high school media center. If you are joining speech, you and a parent must attend. See Mrs. Tessier or Mr. Zayer with questions. There will be a parent meeting Wednesday, January 17th at 6 p.m. for those interested in going on a trip to Ecuador in the high school media center. The trip will take place June 22nd, 2020 through July 1st, 2020. See Mrs. Sackreiter for more information. Are you looking to improve your athletic performance this winter? If so, you should consider joining the Athletes Performance Program. All BBE students are invi invited to work with a personal trainer for strength training. This is also open to students who are not in a winter sport if they would like to get ready for spring sports. APP takes place on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week from 6.15 to 7.30 a.m. On Saturday, January 20th, there will be no open gym due to the snow days dance. However, there will still be open gym the next day on Sunday. Otherwise, there is open gym every Saturday from 7 to 9 at the BBE High School and, from, and Sunday from 1 to 3 p.m. at the elementary. The cost is $1 and everyone is welcome. And finally, remember that the end of the semester is on Friday, January 19th. So be sure to make sure you are keeping up on your schoolwork and checking your grades for sports eligibility. Now let's move into this week's Focus Point. This week we, we went to talk to the robotics team about their plans for this year's robot and what benefits this organization has to offer. Technology is used constantly in our everyday life from reading social media to doing homework and on a worldwide level from stock trading to keeping hospitals functioning properly. The challenges that developers and engineers must overcome to create this technology take many unique skills from problem solving to teamwork. Every year, the BBE Robotics team, instructed by Mr. Jurstad, gets to go through this same process of using these skills to come up with their robot. How long have you been instructing the robotics team here at BBE? Uh, I've been the instructor for seven years. The BBE Robotics team is part of the first robotics competition where each year, high school students internationally get a six-week period to design and build a robot aimed at completing a certain task. This past Saturday, the robotics team headed up to Staples, Minnesota for this year's kickoff. What kickoff is, is it is where we get together um, at, a, at a site. We actually go up to Staples Community College and they have a worldwide release of what this year's game or challenge is going to be. Our goal is, or a robot has to take these crates, and there's two places we want to put them on. There's a big scale raised about five feet off the ground. We place these in our side, and as long as ours outweighs their side, it keeps us adding, what's what, three points per second that we have it controlled. And there's also a low one on the ground, about one foot off the ground that we have to get into. That one gives us about one, two points for every se seconds or three seconds that we have it in there. 
Although the official robotics season started this weekend, the robotics team works throughout the year, working hard, especially over the past few months, preparing for this competition by doing different projects. Now that the build season for this year has begun, members will now be hard at work in all different aspects of the robotics competition. Mostly I do programming, public representation, stuff like that, and so for programming we do all the coding for the robot. Uh, public representation, we take whatever pictures we need to and make whatever flyers or posters. Well, through my first two years, I was doing mostly the mechanical work on the robot. You know, just building the most structural materials. And then two years ago, and last year including, that would be my time is when I worked with electronic and pneumatic systems on the robot. And this year they're going to have me move into the programming of the robot. After the six weeks of build time are up, the robotics team will head up to Duluth for their annual competition. This event takes place at the Amsoil Arena where BBU will compete against many other different robotics teams throughout the region. To get ready for this big event, the Jaguars will be headed to a local event to make sure that their robot is ready. We're having what's called a zero week event and the week before we go up to the Duluth competition, we'll be meeting in Wilmer and having a practice session and there'll be many teams from around the state that are going to come to that and it gives us a good chance to kind of iron out any bugs we might have in our robot and it also will give the community a chance to actually see the robots being used and in competition. With the ever-intensifying workplace, there is no doubt that employers are looking for people with certain attributes that will benefit the company. With all of the effort that goes into robotics each year, members get to learn many of these skills that employers are looking for. One of the biggest things that I feel I've learned in robotics is like, it's kind of like school, but instead of taking it and taking a test with what you've learned, you're actually like making a true physical thing. You're actually getting progress from what you're learning and what you're doing. I've learned a plethora of things. Um, how to code, how to build. It's mostly been people skills though. In robotics you have a lot of different opportunities. Uh, obviously any of the robotic type stuff, computer programming, those skills are in extremely high demand right now. Although many believe robotics is heavily focused on just building and designing robots, the group is always looking for people to join the team and have a good time while working towards a common goal. Um, most people think that they're not smart enough, and that's that's not true. You don't need to be super smart to be on the robotics team. There's a place for everyone, whether it be you want to draw and design our t-shirts and our banners, or you want to just do the building part. Come and take a look. Uh, during the build season here, we're working every day after school. Come down, take a look around, see what we're doing. If it's something you would enjoy, we would love to have you on our team. And there's absolutely no pressure to join, so don't feel like you're going to be pressured if you come down and take a look. And we'll be checking back with the robotics team's progress in the coming weeks, so make sure to watch for that in our upcoming episodes. Now let's get going on to this week's sports wrap. We start with girls basketball. Last Thursday on January 4th, the girls took on Maple Lake at home for a conference game. The Jag play Jags played well in the first half of this tough game, heading into the half 35-20. The team kept this high level of play going all the way through the end of the game, winning 63-49. to Then this past Friday, the team took on the Sox Center Main Streeters away. The Jags, however, had trouble keeping up against the 2A team. They put up a good fight, but the girls ended up falling to Sox, 39-66. to Then this past Tuesday, the girls had a conference game away against Piers. The girls got the momentum going early, and with Piers' shots not falling, they headed into the half up by over 20 points. With BBE's tremendous lead, the JV team got a large amount of play varsity playtime. The Jags ended up winning this one 59-27. to The girls play home tonight against Painesville. We hope to see you there. There. Now on to boys basketball. Last Friday the boys headed to Howard Lake Waverly Winstead for a conference matchup. The first half was close with the Jaguars headed into the half neck and neck. Towards the end of this intense game it was anybody's game but in the end Howard Lake ended up winning 54 to 48. 
Then this past Tuesday, the boys took on Parker's Prairie. The Jags played great against the team in the first half, going into the half 30-29. Then in the start of the second, Parker's Prairie was on fire from the three-point line, getting out to a double-digit lead. Then in the final seven minutes, the Jags went on a run, cutting the lead down to six, but in the end, Parker's Prairie was able to hold on and win 68-58. Next, let's talk wrestling. Last Friday, BBE played host for a home invitational. Out of the seven teams there, the Jaguars finished third with 172 points. In, the fir in first and second were Long Prairie Gray Eagle with 199 points and Minnesota with 189.5 points. Cannon Swanson also received his 100th career win. Then, this past Tuesday, the team headed to Sox Center for a try with Sox Center, Ma Sox Center Melrose and Bold. The Jags won both matchups, winning against Sox Center Melrose 47-19 and against Bold 63-9. Last night, the wrestling team had a quad, and tonight they have a varsity invite in Painesville. We'll have the recap of these in our next show. And finally, let's look at dance. On Saturday, January 6th, the girls had a competition in Alexandria. Both Varsity Jazz and Kit got 11th place out of 13 and 12 teams, respectively. Then, at this year's Home Dance Invitational, the, te the team took on schools from a wide area. Varsity Jazz got 6th and Varsity Kit got 7th out of 8 teams. The dance team had an Invitational in Minnewaska last night, and we will also have these results in our next show. And that concludes this week's program. If you have something that you would like to be put in the Jaguar Week in Review, or if you would like to suggest ideas for future shows, email them to broadcast at bbejaguars.org. Also, if you enjoyed the program, be sure to subscribe to us at BBE Broadcasting on YouTube, iTunes, and the Google Play Store to watch or listen to our upcoming program. Due to finals week next week, the Jaguar Week in Review will be taking the week off and will return at the start of next semester. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on keeping on. Have a great weekend, DVE.